gazed in wide wonder at the joy they had found. The head nurse spoke up, the leave this one alone. She could tell right away that I was bad to the bone, bad to the bone, bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. Bad. Endeavor Houston, good morning. And good morning, Houston. How are y'all doing down there today, Mark? And we're in great shape. And how about you, Joe? Yeah, feeling good. Endeavor Houston, we're on the flight deck. Okay, welcome. I'm going to go ahead and start our tape. Uh, what this is is a little tour that we took from Space Hab down the tunnel uh, to the mid-deck and the flight deck. And I'll introduce it by saying that you know we're on the day before landing, so there's a lot of activity as we prepare to uh, stow our hardware and finish up our experiment op. And I hope that what you'll see is the environment uh, that we've uh, been working in and uh, get a feel for what it's like. This is not Cecil D. DeMille. This is uh, our eyeball view of uh, living in zero gravity. So stand by. We're going uh, into the hab right now from the tunnel, which runs from the mid-deck to the space hab. It's floating right in front of my eye, so you're seeing what we see as we come in. We're looking uh, towards the tail of the shuttle. That uh, large white package you see in the center is actually an empty foam cushion that uh, contains some of our transfer cargo. We're now scanning to the starboard side and now to the forward side. You can see uh, the tunnel we just came through and the Space Hab subsystem computer that uh, we set up every day. And if you probably noticed, we set up our hardware a little bit differently. We don't have to lay it down on tables. Any place we've got a good piece of Velcro seems to do. We have our cue cards up, uh, a handheld mic there Velcroed, and then over to the starboard side you see many of the soft uh, containers that were used for our cargo that worked out very well. Now going back towards the aft end, you see the OPM rack. The OPM is uh, safely secured within it. And the cushion that's uh, gently tethered to the front. And now let's go back to the aft end. Uh, we just missed Jim. We'll see him again a little bit later. He was working on MGM, which is in the center there. You'll see it in a moment. Right in front of you are the two SAMs sensor heads. Those are acceleration measuring systems. And up there, the blue box is the EOR freezer. And now the two CGBAs that uh, Dave tended to during his flight and that we transferred during the flight. Those are part of our status check every day. And surrounding them are more of the uh, transfer containers, the cargo containers. We get a look closer look at the SAMs here. Uh, it's flown many flights. Uh, comes out of the Lewis Research Center. It's an excellent acceleration uh, measurement system. These remote heads can be put anywhere to measure in different frequency ranges the uh, AC accelerations that experiments are exposed to. There are two chambers to the SAMs. Uh, I'm not showing you the active one right now. This is uh, one of the cell test cells uh, that is operated at standby over on the left-hand side. And maybe we'll just take a peek at an active run here. You have to pull the curtain and, well, I don't know, there's a run, no, nope, we better not. There's a run going on and we don't want to interrupt uh, with the uh, extraneous light. That's the MGM camcorder set up. And up on the ceiling there is part of the Japanese experiment for radiation monitoring. It's called the detector unit strapped to the ceiling with a silver dosimeter strapped around it. Another advantage of a weightless environment is that you can use all surfaces. And off to your right there on the starboard side of the space hab is the uh, DTO-1125, or TIPIC experiment, out of the Johnson Space Center, with its uh, dosimeter balls that's trapped in various places. That's also part of our status check each day. 
when I call down or Jim calls down the uh, time and the dosimeter reading. It's called a tissue equivalent proportional counter. And we're also testing various materials to use as shielding in future spacecraft. Now if we scan to the port side, we see a large rack that is a combination of two experiments, the uh, VRAFE and the Japanese uh, radiation monitoring experiment. We've been doing quite a lot of work with the RRMD. It has a, an electrical panel there up at the top and then a data recording unit next to the computer. And that's the RRMD laptop that we have set up for keeping track of data. We've done a couple of different configuration changes uh, during the mission. This is the last configuration change, and we will deactivate this experiment at the end of the day. We certainly were hoping uh, that the VRA would be up and running. Uh, I think it's a great uh, piece of technology there. Sometimes it's the little things that get you in zero gravity, and that's why we test them here before we permanently install them. Just below the Space Hab logo there, you can see one of the control panels. And it uh, looks like uh, we're going to try to take a trip down the tunnel, but I forgot to mention that we have two windows in the overhead, and here's Salajan taking a look out of them and giving us a greeting. And he's uh, wishing a birthday uh, greeting to the president of Uzbekistan. Now we're going back down the tunnel, and we're going to pass through the ODS, or the Orbiter Docking System, which is also now our external airlock. Those yellow handrails on your left and right are what I'm using to kind of float myself down the tunnel. I'm going to come in under the EMUs in the external airlock, and we're going to just look up and take a look at uh, what we were calling MS-7 and MS-8 on our mid-deck for quite a few days. And we'll be uh, stowing... Um, the centerline camera as well today. Now we're going into uh, a tunnel adapter, which is where we keep uh, several bags of stowage uh, during the mission. Here we keep our laundry bags and uh, flight data file that we're not using. Now the mid-deck is not only a laboratory, it's also our living area. Mike's been working on a lot of our mid-deck experiments. Here he's setting up a camera operation uh, for MTNE. As you know, we've been working uh, some anomalies with that, and we're trying to understand uh, what's happening in that uh, experiment. Just above that is the sea bass experiment, and certainly while you can't see uh, the fish, the big ones or the little ones or the snails, we've been peering through the screens because it's back, backlit back there and find it very interesting. The commander is working out on the bicycle, and we'll all get our turn today. And you can see that we have quite a bit of stowage that uh, we've been moving around on the mid-deck. These two laptops uh, represent what's happening on the GPS experiment. DTO 700-14 and DTO 700-15, which we call SIGI. Unfortunately, they don't need tables. Sometimes things just get away from you. Now we scan uh, to our port side uh, to the MAR area, the galley area, and the WCS area. And our prime payload just needed to have something to do, so we put him to work, and he's turned out to be very good at this. We want to give this be a vehicle back as clean as we got it. It really has been in great shape. So I mentioned before, this is a uh, straightening up and cleaning up day, and everybody's involved. Just saw a little bit of Joe there. Joe's spending a lot of his time by the galley working water fills and CWC and so forth. This is a check of the refrigerator, the PEHM, and one of the things we noticed is that uh, 
we have to keep the filter clean. And so we just cleaned the filter for those folks. We had a small pallet that had been sucked in. But you can see the CWC bags down there, and he's also been DT doing DTL 1331. We also have activity up on the flight deck, so we'll just float up there. Where Jim uh, has uh, quite a few cameras arrayed. And every time we all get a chance, we come up and take some photos uh, for the Earth Ops folks. These are 70 millimeter Hasselblad. And this is the EarthCam camera set up in the starboard window. And it now is uh, taking uh, good pictures. We check it periodically to see if it's healthy. And just to verify that we're in space, uh, we decide to put a few Earth views in here. That was the overhead window. Now we're going to look out the aft window at the tail and the uh, docking adapter out there. Can't quite see the gas cans, but we have four gas cans in the back. The view of the uh, front cockpit, uh, that is the flight plan that's tethered and floating in front of you. And the OCA PGSC, which now has the EarthCam software, is uh, sitting up on our port uh, panel. We're still in the process of reconfiguring from yesterday's on docking, where we had quite a few camcorders set up to support DTO 1114, which was the mere photo survey. So you still see a lot of cables routed around. It's probably more wire than I've seen on any flight. And I hope the Earth Cam people can see, but there are three green dots down there. Well, let's go back down the uh, inner access deck area. We'll go down head first this time. And we'll say uh, goodbye to the commander, Terry Wilcott, who's just done a superb job with this flight. And I'll say goodbye as well, and thank you again for all the support that we got from the ground.